actually joins us from Australia. So he's a professor at Griffith University. So he had a long journey to get to here. Yeah. So he was from Australia, then he was in China, then he went to Los Angeles, and then Mexico City, and here he is in yeah. Alaska. So it's truly a pleasure to have Dr. Xu join us today. Dr. Xu did his undergraduate and his master's research at the California Academy, I'm in California, the Chinese <laughs> Academy of Science. <laughs> This is that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to the CAS yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being the California Council Science, but he did uh, the Chinese yeah, Science, Chinese Science. Science. Science, and he did his PhD at Griffith University, where he is currently a professor, as it is there, in the Soil Plant Climate Systems Group. And among his main interests are the biogeochemical processes of carbon transferred in terrestrial ecosystems, developing techniques to assess genetic and environmental controls of plants, and how climate change growth in terrestrial ecosystems. I was extremely impressed when I looked at his curriculum, hundreds of articles, millions of dollars of support. He really made a major contribution to climate change and how it affects uh, forest agricultural systems. So without any further ado, Dr. Shu, we're glad to have you here. And Well, thanks, Mike, and they, thanks, Fred. And they, as you know, that they, uh, Fred did the postdoc uh, with me a few years ago. I lost Carl Wynn, but they certainly a few years ago. And they, this is my first trip to Mexico. And, and they are always long for Mexico visit, but this time I'm like it. I made it. So I think they just have looked at the, 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 the different place and they said very impressed. The topic as, as, as you can see, I'm having a strong interest in the particular long term, a real climate change impact on forest ecosystem, particularly in this case. And particularly those tree rings are focused on tree crops. And what we found, it looks like there's a global convergence of nonlinear tree crops. That means there will be tipping points. That's what I, I'm going to share with you. The tipping point is hard to predict, vary from place to place, but we might have a global tipping point. I'm not going to go through this details, but this is all my interest. That's why I get the climate change because everything is connected. Okay, so uh, I'm interested in a lot of process, biogeochemical process below ground, the bound ground, and the, naturally that the, as a soil science, from soil science, we do need to make sure that the soils and the food are secure. So I'm interested. And they, to, to do a lot of studies, so microbiology is very important. It's a lot of nutrient cycling below ground. And, the, and the, with advanced technology, so we also try to explore the, this molecular tools, I understand. And they, they particularly a bit more insight how the microbiology is functioning in terms of bio, the carbon nitrogen cycle. And the stable isotope is, is a quite a cool tool because it's natural library. We, we actually, most of what I show you today is natural. We don't use any library. It's just because the process, plant process, soil process discriminate uh, uh, the ice cup, like for example, um, uh, carbon 13 versus carbon 12. You know, most carbon, 99% or more, is carbon 12. But the small percentage is carbon 13. That plant, soil process, fractionate 
with this thing, actual fingerprint is some about the process. Likewise, N15, for example, 99.6% uh, of nitrogen in atmosphere and soil is M14. But there's about 0.4% is M15. But M15 process is also, M15 is also naturally fractionated. And the, the last 10 years, we made a significant advance understanding how the, the, the fractionation of M15 and underpin different power process to the nitrogen cycle. And of course, NMR, this is quite useful tools to look at the organic matter, structure, composition. I wouldn't get into too much detail because of the carbon sequestration in soil is quite important. And the tree rings, that, that's, I'm coming here talking about tree rings. This is my last 18 years of interest. Before that, I've done a lot of agriculture, horticulture. I could do probably. Okay. Well, uh, as you know, that the. This one? Yes. Oh, yeah. I won't bore you too much, but you, 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 and most people with the plant side, you're not triggering. So uh, we work on the species with rings, because not all the species with rings. Okay, so because we want to use the. Uh, the ring information of public with previous climate or management. And clearly that they when you when you get rings you can count from present. And then you can you can first you, you can see how the, the tree how old the tree dating the trees. And more important you can see over the last whatever 150 years or 50 years depending on how big the tree would be uh, drops in response to changing uh, climate, but also management. Okay. Uh, over the last 160 years, the post-industrial revolution, the CO2, now, I think in the last 160 years, CO2 increased very fast compared with Pre-industrial, more than 1,000 years, this CO2 peak about 208 BPM fraction. But last 160 years, we actually lift uh, CO2 to now about 420 BPM. That means about uh, 140 BPM increase just last 50 years. And that, I have to say, is quite different historical climate change. In the, in the past, climate change also happened, but it's over 10,000 years. Okay, instead of talking about just one or two centuries. So it, it's quite a different, the, the current climate change, some of the features from the previous one. And of course, with the industrial uh, development, uh, it's not just CO2 change. You know, we also, some place also associated with acid position. You know, I believe, I'm not sure about Mexico, but I know certainly in Europe, for example, in in Europe, they have experienced some um, asset deposition. And, then, and also I've been challenged because with the rapid development. So the asset deposition is also come implicated in tree growth, impact with climate change, impact on the growth. So we need to be aware there's so many factors uh, uh, impact on the growth. And most of the control, most of climate change in research, particularly are uh, empirical ones. They more look at the uh, short term, like five to ten years, or control experiment. You know, uh, in a lab, you've got many factors, but sometimes there's no path to the soil. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, that given the experiment, like with CO two elevation, it's quite expensive to do for us because you, you need to maintain the ambient temperature, say two hundred ppm above ambient. It's all cost energy. It's a and the same. So. It's, there's only a few places in the world you can afford to do that. One of the places, I'm, you know, that is the So, but some of the work I, I'm involved with tree rings come from Duke University. <coughs> so, most of the partnership studies undertaken, either in short term studies, okay, or controlled experiment, and, and with a big treatment difference, like for example, snap change in CO2 concentration, and often just one or two factors. You know, they, they're not looking at complex, the real climate change. And they, 
And so obviously short term impact could be quite different from long term. And also step change could be quite different from gradual, which is real climate change. So I've mentioned that the longer than just less than 10 years, you know, this is compared with 150 years. It's very short. And and the day, because the climate change is dynamic, a different device, the pattern could be different. And my colleague, you know, uh, Professor Graham Farquhar, oh sorry, annual tutoring is we introduced tutoring because you've got an annual ring. So that means that you actually can look at the, the graphs in the annual scale. And they can link with the some of the climate information, or at least short term. Uh, and they so we can look at the climate change that can happen, or sometimes even a century, depending on how big the tree, how old the tree would be. So that is an advantage of that. But the conditions you need ground and seasonal distinguish environment. In tropical, sometimes very hard to fashion the rings, you know, the annual rings. So that means that in the tropical, we have trouble to find a species which get clear rings. Together with tree ring growth measurement, which is a, a clear indicator of carbon, and then by using some of the stable ice composition, which I, I think it's been tested in the lab, in, in the field, like C13, for example, is a good the carbon ice, C13, third C13, for example, fractionation of third C13 is a very good indicator of plant water use efficiency. That means dry matter per unit of water produced. So, so that means the number is ratio, so it's a red photosynthesis, so all of reduce this matter, which is a evaporative transpiration. So with oxygenating, you can focus on water. The ratio is fixed. One the one effect of the ratio is fixed, the other one's fixed. So you can see how this CO2, for example, influence photosynthesis directly, but CO2 also influence temperature. Temperature also driving precipitation change, evaporation change. And they, so you can see CO2 concentration itself, but also the temperature uh, run for precipitation change in the last 150 years due to the changing climate. And N15, as you know, that they, is a good indicator of not just as the position, but also indicator from our recent work is nitrogen cycle. So you can see the, uh, a different process in place. And of course, we're not sure of CO2 data because if you look at the Antarctica, you can take dating back hundred thousand years. Okay, so but remember that this is not biological. And the tree ring is biological. So it's different. We need that data, but that doesn't mean it's biological happening the same way. And I'm actually most of the tree ring work is reconstruct past climate temperature rainfall. Okay. What my interest la grabación ha comenzado. The real climate data, CO2 data, and you look at how climate change and impact with as the position to impact on growth of trees in space and in time. See if it's linear, non-linear, what sort of pattern will be. Okay, so generally, uh, combined with pre-link measurement, stabilized stuff, and CO2 data, and, and climate data, I'm actually using tree ring to look at the real impact or calibrate some of the model, which is, I think, the uh, climate change model. They actually use a lot of short term studies, or theoretical, you know, the sort of the thermodynamics, mass, energy flow. They calculate at some point, but I think they need to be validated. So, however, no method is perfect. You always suffer some weakness. Tuning is also not the result exact. The most important feature of tuning is you don't have control. You, have to, you can't control CO2, you can't control rainfall, you can't control everything's changed. So that means we do need to understand the driver's impact on tree growth in, in space and time. That means you look at the relative contribution rather than absolute contribution. So so this is very important, using treatment to calibrate, validate some of the climate change projections. Okay. I moved to university about 
19 years ago. The reason is because I dropped it after my PhD. Actually, I spent about 13 years working with the industry, in the government, and industry focused research agencies. So I'm interested in how you know, they improve their crops, the nutrition and productivity, and the forest, tree grows, and the silver cut, and so on. The problem with that is that you have very limited capacity to pursue some of your personal interests, like climate change, you know, some fundamental issues which will be interesting. But most important, for research side, you need to be able to risk it, go to the top international conference. Okay, when I was with the Queensland government or other state governments, you know, given the money is secure, it's not, not guaranteed you can go because of the minister, or like the Prime Minister, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Forest, they're looking in details if you, if any relevance, it's a lot of climate change and a lot of the sort of global one is probably very remote related to your, the area of you, you work with. So, minister usually only approve probably one third of application which is guaranteed secure funding. What that means, uh, pursue the academic freedom and the research is challenging, working with industry, government, focus agency. Because I have experience working with industry, so I have secure money, and, and the, so I went to my university colleague, I said, you know, I'm getting, I've secured five years salary for my service, they trust me, and I'm doing this sort of stuff. Can I place myself in the university and then maybe you can give us a couple of students, you know, as part of sort of joint funding? Universe like that, because that means you're linking with university, uh, with real world students, with, with real world. So I got myself a research professor for five years, and since 2005. And the first thing, opportunity I take is to go to France, to get, attend the International Conference, which is the Forest Soil Conference in Bordeaux. I, I think it, for those people, I'm sure that some of the people enjoy red wine now where Bordeaux is, which is a very famous for red wine, and they very good because we have colleagues from the Blau world that present different talks, but also very good social activities. So, because French colleagues provide red wine, white wine, from lunch to dinner, which is unlimited. It's, that, that in Australia, they never got that opportunity, so I'm a little wide. <laughs> so when, you, when you've got that situation, not just science you enjoy, you also enjoy the network you talk to. So I just happened to be follow one of the Belgian colleagues. He, using the tree rings, look at acid deposition on calcium magnesium nutrition of open pitch. You know, just, you know, the acid creates some malnutrition and how to fix it up. So, so he's using tree rings. So, and I, I mean, you know that I'm interested in climate change. I'm interested in tree rings <laughs> before that. But, but what I told him, I said, well, you finish all the tree ring work, publishing global change in biology. What are you going to do with all your tree rings? They said, well, you interested? I said, of course I'm interested, but can I, you ship all that one to Australia? And I share all your data with me because I'm not tree ring experts. That means I can, I can test if tree ring is useful with the climate change. But also with minimum cost, because I don't need to collect the tree and that sort of stuff. So that's well, I find that this is for site, which is not my site. Actually, international collaboration is important. That's why I come to see Amanda, because collaboration is essential. You don't have to do everything, because they say all colleagues are doing different things. You can be partner. So this Belgian is looking at the position. That means the pollution area in Brussels, which is essential Europe. They have a very a strong acid position. There's three sites in the Brussels. And then, of course, he's deliberately looking for very little approach uh, area, which is a, a we call it high Belgium, which is a relative mountain area like yours in high. Uh, with uh, more rainfall, low temperature. The, 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 the high Belgium is about 120 meters above sea, but compared with here, it's very low. But, but they compare with Brussels, 80 meters above sea level is still 40 meters high. So the temperature gradient is in the Brussels, the mean and annual temperature for the last one and one hundred years is about 12 degrees. But in the high Belgium, it's 10 degrees. That means it's two degrees cooler. But most important, the rainfall. Brussels is about 800 millimeter rainfall annually for the last 200 years. But in the high Belgium, 
the 1200, that means 50% more. And they, so that just won't, the pollution credit is just a natural part of my climate change credit, from temperature rainfall credit. So we use the same stuff, but they're just, just doing the ice top, just look at the CO2 and, and, and water and so on. So this is Brussels in the Botanic Garden, if people know Brussels Botanic Garden. So they have detailed work for Cape Breakout, 1,400 years. Uninterrupted during World War uh, II or World War I. And this is, it's called High Belgium. It's about 120 kilometers away from Brussels, but it's a, it's much rural area. The most is surrounded by forest. This is an old forest area, so pollution is almost minimal. So, but it's also high rainfall, low temperature. That means it's less water than it compared with Brussels. So I've done. They go to trees. Come to Australia, I go to quarantine lab. I can accept trees, sample soil, some from drought. Because I'm interested in climate change, collaborate internationally. So I've done an ice cream, class C 13 and the Professor Graham Farkle have a, a, a theory. He either you can use delta C setting fractionation linking directly with plant water use efficiency. Okay, water use efficiency that is a very good index. Is dry metal production per unit of water. Okay. So if you can see that this is a as I said three sites in Brussels. Each site with more species, not the next one. So the first site, for example, is a beach, and then you can see that they got water use efficiency increasing or increasing. But if you look, if you look carefully, initially much sharper than lighter. Water. So that means water use efficiency dry by could change in the last 150 years. Okay. Very significant increase. This is a, this is the oak, which is slow growing trees, the same. This is a beach again, but actually less, it's more sort of a less variation because I think you know that the, in addition to CO2, the soil fertility also matters. The soil variability, nutrient also influence tree growth, not CO2. So this is high value, which is species, must be, this is side by side, so I can now look at the species defect. It's not just climate change, biological matter, in fact, also in French, the response. The beach, and oak, so you can look at it, they're all increasing. It, and then we work out the grass, which is there for forest. We basically in, as you use the ring with, because for ring with, you've got a big trees you can compare with ring with. Uh, if you want the, the smaller trees, you actually use base area, because of the that. That means I'm also bad. It's so much a string with. Okay. That's the formula we use, which is the most force used. The basic area we calculate is the formulas. But we mainly interest increment. So that means uh, as an index, cross index. Very interesting. What we found, BEI. Does increase with CO2 initially, but it doesn't last forever. You see that the peak at a certain point. Once the peak is over, it grows actually declining. What we try to find out what is that one pool of growth done? What we found with, with uh, Belgium is we look at the annual rainfall temperature and, and the CO2 relation. Yes, the CO2 increased temperature. It, every, it doesn't matter what you look at, minimum temperature. But when you look at CO2, oh, sorry, the water precipitation change in the last 200 years, there's no relationship with temperature. Okay. And then, so that means rainfall didn't, annual rainfall didn't change over the last 200 years in Brussels. But when you look at any season of rainfall, because that's what matters, is during the ground season, like summer rainfall. What we found is as temperature rising, either see mean temperature or maximum and minimum temperature. I'm here, I'm particularly referring to mean temperature. Precipitation is declining. 
So you don't need to be Einstein to figure out temperature keep rising, rainfall keep declining. It's a matter of time. Water is becoming a good thing. And that's why we see that water is a positive relation to grass. And water is a, it, it could be a limiting factor. If you get more water, better grass. But after water becomes limiting, the tree the actually grows declining. Because, but even though water use continues continue to rise, in the water use it doesn't matter. Initially, light the oil impact, but when the tree has become water limiting, the water use is increasing is indicated it's adaptive water limiting mark. That means reducing the reduction of water, but it's not enough to offset the reduction of water. Ultimately, the tree grows declining. Okay, slowly declining because of the climate, the tree is also adapt to water limiting mark. And the aging, you know, the aging self alteration of blood without it doesn't matter if it's CO2. So, is the aging effect matters? The answer is no. If there's any effect, it's slightly positive, but it's only accounted for less than 1%. So, that means the aging is not what pull the tree down. Okay, look at the real data, because that's most important of the real data. And then you can feel, you can see that that is the beach in one side, Brussels. As, as CO2 increasing, photosynthesis increasing, you know that photosynthesis is CO2 in the water, is, is substrate, whichever is limiting, is controlled the photosynthesis. So when water is not limiting, the more CO2, the more grouse. So that is positive with water use species of grouse. But it's peak at a certain point. That is where I say temperature rising, evaporation, sorry, precipitation declining, the water has become more and more limiting. When the water availability and the CO2 availability is equal, you peak, optimize, or tipping over. Once you're tipping over, the tree grows less, it's more CO2. Okay. It's not CO2 poisons yet, but it's due to increasing temperature and also precipitation change reduction. Which will lead to water limitation. The other thing I want to say that there's a lot of work on climate change. You look at the CO2 effects on semi conductors, leaf semi conductors, but unfortunately, most of the work done uh, with con controlled CO2 exposure is about 800 ppm or 750 ppm because that's what projected by the end of the century is going to lift to the degree. That may not be high enough, but, but they can see. As CO2 is rising, actually, some other conductors to reduce. So what that means, you don't even need to increase temperature. As long as CO2 continues rising, the some other conducts will reduce. Because the reason they do that, because they're the high gradient, the diffusion is much easier to the frozen side. So some other does not need to open as large as would be. Because plants, all the ecosystems follow energy conservation is so more than that. So they don't need to waste energy. Okay, so, but with increasing temperature, decreasing rainfall, the water emitting is a bridge fast, more than just CO2 reduction of the uh, smart factors. This is the oak, okay, which is supposed to grow slow down trees. The ratio is better. 67%, remember, this is not controlled experiment. This is tree ground as well, just, just harvest. So you can see CO2 is a dominant factor on tree growth over the last 160 years. Again, it's tipping out. And they, what, what that means, those trees in Brussels, once they're tipping out, if we can date in the time, that means from that time onwards, CO2 effect or climate change effect is a positive with feedback from CO2. Because uh, every year they take less CO2 from here. Okay, because even the emission is zero, the CO2 will be a salary because it's positive carbon feedback, ecosystem carbon feedback to CO2. And there's another beach, which is, it's probably, if you see that, it's less valuable because probably less soil availability because all the botanic garden, remember, it's not just soil availability, there are also irrigation. Irrigation can also increase. Yeah, it's not just CO2. What else matters? Once you're down there, come brush up, we, we work out the tipping point 300 to 18 ppm. 
what that means in 1961, big oak alive. They take less CO2, they ground less. They take less CO2 from air than year before. That means from there onwards, these trees possibly is a source, not a thing of CO2 there in the air because they make more contributing to the air or relatively the, the CO2 in the air accumulate because they take less the share compared with the year before. And I hope that makes sense. It's relatively okay. Forest still taking CO2, but just take less. And when you move to the less water limiting environment, very similar. But the, of course, tipping point will be different. Okay, this oak trees is very close to that. So the slow down trees, they will suffer more. More sensitive than the fast growing trees. And we work out. 330 ppm. So when one is less limiting, it takes a bit longer temperature because the temperature is lower, you need to warm up. The, the, it takes a bit longer to reduce the precipitation to reach the tipping point. 1972, about 50 years ago, high Belgian trees also take less CO2 than the year before. That means that instead of sink, the tipping out becomes source. So don't think fast. It's always constant sink. Relatively, they can change it from sink to source. Now, getting very excited, and uh, you know, the, we, we're talking with my Belgian colleagues, they said, oh, it's very good, very new, good concept, because everything I think is a linear growth. The growth temperature is linear, and the rainfall temperature, uh, the growth is linear, we find it's non linear. So that means uh, there will be tipping point. It's not always good. At a certain point, it's changing out. We actually come into nature, uh, you say foolishly or eagerly, <laughs> and 2007 we come into nature. And they, believe it or not, wait for five, six weeks, because we saw that just one or two weeks we get a sorry letter. You know? Most people come into nature, you just get sorry, yeah, this is not the right fit. And they, the uh, nature agent that sent the letter said, oh, this is the, your, your, your work looks like very interesting, but it looks like this is some new ideas, but we're not sure the, your, your, your stuff are technically sound. So we need to send our review. We need to see independent experts and, and to see if your data is significant enough, is more enough to be published. And after another seven or eight weeks, because you know some, also, well known scientists on vacation. They, they don't normally return to the review in two or three weeks. And they, so after eight weeks, the nature return or edit the decision with review of comment. The latter is not totally surprised. We know that, probably not. It's just we don't know what reason to give it to you. And in this case, the, uh, there's two reviews. One reviewer is clearly is a very unhappy because I'm challenging his theory, theory because he is using. Uh, tree growth to reconstruct the past temperature rainfall, linearly and the global. So he published one on article how that CO2 increased temperature can reflect in tree growth for the last. Uh, so he published a paper in Nature in, in 1998, which is a, about nine years before I published. And I don't read Nature until the first time I tried Nature, 2000. Not every year, you would love it, but not every year. So I miss his article for this, it's very disappointing. If I read his article, I probably wouldn't sign it because it, obviously I challenge his theory, but not enough evidence. Okay, he's doing global. Thousands of tree rings. Sediment, not just tree rings, sediment, indicate global warming, CO2 in temperature, temperature lead to bad grass. Okay. So he just, just said now that this is totally not recent data is too little and they are not sure why it's the uh, increased temperature water become the there's no model say that. At least two thousand seven. So it lists a lot of stuff which is I think it, well, you know, when they calm down I know they're all right, but you know when you when you got the check it's always the initial response is also you know, it's it's it, it, not no, I, I can see your point, but it's not that bad. You know, you just say no, it's not enough for nature, that's it, we don't understand that. And lucky enough there's another reviewer which is true. 
Puff is all this. They, 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 he is equally excited. He said, oh, this is very long. He said, this is not what he tried. He was real CO2. Climate change in the look at the carbon response. But he said, that, well, your assumption is that the increased temperature will lead to reduction precipitation. That is not true everywhere. Uh, it may be true in Belgium, but it's, you, you, need, you need proof it's global. Okay? Rising temperature and lead to warm limitation. And also reduction ground. But he said if you do prove globally, that could be a major cover story. But that was not ready yet. Just go back and do more work. Okay, so the so in 2009, okay, after you the reject, you always think you'll find some other people help you because climate change is more than just trees. And then there's a, a major article which is a, the five the photosynthesis temperature at leaf level. But not outside the, the plus chloroplasts is constant at 21.4. That is quite cool. And the, what that means is ambient temperature itself may may not influence photosynthesis temperature. So that means te temperature per se may not be the key driver of carbon cycle. That's what they say. And nobody really understands what you say is time. But then I think, yeah, I thought even human beings, you know. Doesn't matter in Sweden or in Mexico when you when you are not when you're normal, you're not sick, you not your body temperature doesn't change because of ambient temperature. In Sweden, you get a couple of degrees lower than in Mexico because biologically will be optimized because it's the same species. So what that means, temperature properties indicator doesn't tell you the cause effect. It's just when we sick. Doctor always measure temperature, but. It, to know exactly what's going on, they, they need to do a blood test, do a urine test, and so on. So what they say, be careful. Temperature for biology system, it could be an indicator, but it may not be cause effect. And this work, and, and I use, we've got the data to test if temperature matters or not. We put temperature into the equation, but of course we didn't submit the nature, we just tested it if it's a practice. If you can see that the temperature effect is close as much worse. Talk about half. Okay, sometimes no relationship. So what that means, but if you put all the data together, ground for CO2 temperature into the equation, the temperature effect is a zero. So just prove that ambient temperature change does not influence photosynthesis temperature. Okay. So that that is cool, but it's not enough. And there must be reject as a as you know that. You, you better develop the model and the proof is true globally. So that's why I developed a model. And that is not my model. CO2 increase temperature, that is very established. It, but this one is what I'm trying to argue. My argument is probably climate change, it's not just location space. As temperature rising, even the rainfall not change, it's still probably need to in the because you have high vibration. Okay, so my argument that is how most on the land surface. If that's true, and then you you get this this is a, the second order equation. It's a matter of when water is going to take out one and CO two. Okay, the, what what I have to say, the CO two effect is also reduced smart, but nobody has done CO two leach in the field. To see how they, what is the temperature they will need to, to keep it out. So when my, one of my colleagues come to see, from China, want to CO2 effect on pollution, I said, have you got CO2 chamber? They said, yes. We're growing some C3 plants. Just look at the CO2 temperature, CO2 gradient background, 750, because that's most people project by the end of the century, 850, 950. And what we found, you just need about 850 to reach the tipping point. Once you pass 850, the tree, the plant ground slow is because the water cannot go up. Okay, because the matter close to enough water become that. So what that means most of the climate change effects of CO2 is not high enough. 800 is not high. You probably need about 850 to tipping out. But that is only one species, different species. And then recently when you know, when I'm trying to put all the data together, and I find they do, recently there's two papers 
published by the North American, Canadian, and, and the U.S. colleagues. They're looking at the CO2 gradient on grassland. What they found is about 1,100 to 1,200 CO2 to lead to the tipping order. So that means most of uh, CO2 equipment is not high enough CO2. Okay. Anyway, come back to this one. So if that's true, that model is going to be gone. Okay, but the trick, tricky part, temperature will lead to water limitation. And that, in 2007 or 2009, nobody was a problem. Fortunately enough, science had published an atmospheric, uh, atmospheric model and look at the climate change, CO2 warming, and, and, and relative humidity of the farm. On land based system, territory system, 99%, except a small part in uh, South Africa, which is, I think, they are a uh, high temperature, high rainfall. But 99% of dry land or water land base is warm dry. That means water, from model point of view, is getting more. From the land base, is more than that. So, but of course, I've already done many work through that one too. So we went to same temperate forest like Belgium, but the less human interference, not botanic garden, it's real forest. It's in the in China called the Changbai Mountain, which is temperate forest, but they also with two elevation, four species. So we can see the water stream see is even better than my Belgium, because they, they in botanic garden so many human interference. Unfortunately, in China, they only have 60 years temperature buff right for their body. I have to use water use efficiency biology uh, in that to see the water use efficiency and the tree growth relationship. Because it, as you know that, if water use efficiency is a positively related to tree growth, that means photosynthesis is true. So, so you can see there's quite a few species initially increase. There are some trees not, not keeping up yet. Uh, there are some trees that even no relationship are coming back to that. But at least both elevation, some species indicate water is getting more in the bay. But once the water is a is limiting factor, water use species is increasing, but the relationship with the tree growth is negative. That means reduction of water. Water use is increasing as water becomes limiting, they are negative related to tree growth, not positive. So you can see the non linear. So that means past the tipping point, the water is limited. So that is the true physiology data, not temperature data, not rainfall data. And then the other thing is, when you send to nature, they always say, who said that this one is right, that one is a positive way, it's cause effect. You need to have a control experiment, this control. Say, warming will lead to more water limitation. CO2 will increase crops. Not just this association. You need to have control of them. So, warming experiment, I went to Sweden, they have, but not warming whole, whole ecosystem, they just warming soil. Clearly, what warming increases water in the tank. When you get warming, they just the perish in fire. So, that fertilizer, it does influence the tipping point, but it's just one or, one or two years earlier or one or two years later. It doesn't change in the whole water. Level. It just stay, it's, it's shifting it's tipping point. So, what I'm trying to say, it's not if, it's when. Because even temperature change does not change, CO2 will tip it up. But of course, with temperature change, rainfall, uh, precipitation change, change, the tipping point probably come much earlier. And the CO2 effect, which I want to deal with, okay, because as I said, it's not just your correlation is, is cause effect. You need to control. So I want to deal with the throughput 200 ppm higher than ambient. And I do see its positive effect. So that means it's proving the control of CO2 does work out. Okay. But if you look carefully, even when plant trees have declined, that means when the plant new trees, the climate already past tipping point, you only see declining. But CO2 does slow down the decline. So that means the past tipping point. So you only see the growth, you don't see the other positive side because water is already limiting. And this model has been tested globally. Okay, 
The first one to tipping over, which is very surprised, but with a very limited data, with caution, is tropical. 1956 or 322 ppm. Tropical frost, long time ago, potentially is a relatable source of say. And the latest one past tipping point is Bora, which is a 363.6 in 1997. That means about 20 years ago, even the cold air, the tree is taking that seal. Okay. Globally, average, I'm holding my data for that, right? is 353.9 ppm, or you can just abbreviate it as 354 ppm. All 1990, most of the is a relative source of sink, not as we like to be. And that happened to be verified by a theoretical model, which is used in thermodynamic energy flow, which is calculated theoretical planetary property. It's the whole world, including ocean, all the things. 350 ppm. That is a theoretical from energy thermodynamic point of view. But you know, real experimental data. If you think about 1% is acceptable, it's just about the same. 350 for 300 is about the same. So what they're saying, since 1990, globally, most of the of carbon is in force. Since 1990, frost also switched from sink to source. That is a bit scary. So after that, so in the last 18 years, I've done that one work, which proved frost globally, the potential, that's a, that it is a source. So they do they take CO2? They do. But they take less CO2 than the year before. And this is a, another thing. Not just night carbon cycle is going mad, as climate change intensifies the past tipping point. It less. With, but nitrogen is also, what we do is that the last six, eight years for nitrogen cycle, I won't go into detail because that more work to be done. But that highlight, nitrogen is also limited. It's not just water. Nitrogen in global force is also limited. So you don't need to ice Water limiting, nitrogen limit is even declined faster. So uh, almost the tipping point of carbon is matched, the nitrogen. That means carbon and the nitrogen globally is side by side. So uh, not just carbon tipping up, but nitrogen is tipping up. The nitrogen is behind the limit. To say that, that means the temperature probably rise much faster than what we like to see. And then we need more, more or less. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments for Dr. Shu? Go ahead, Fred. Um, do some of your global data include data from Mexico? Yes. Yeah. That's why I come to see my colleague, Armando Technology Contribution. Can you tell us a bit more where you're connected or what? They collected data, I just used data model. It's yeah. very fun. We are mainly working in a high elevation mountains, but uh, uh, hard, hard, hard to define. Yeah, yeah. Most, most of them I, I, I come from contact that type of point. But we also have other uh, data from you know, other species like wild cypress, like uh, that's all you know. Yeah. From the state of Mexico? Yeah, from the state of Mexico, mostly from Mexico. Of the volcano, Canisera. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mainly pie species, but the other species also evolve. Uh, fur. Oh, yeah. The focus on pie because it's, it's, it's a yeah. little bit. Yeah, but I was forgetting that. We also have a um, pie religiosa, also. Okay. And uh, I've collected more than 30 species globally. So the two species is the American one, African and Mexican one. And, and we, <laughs> of course, we have a limit because not all the trees. And, in coal mm -hmm. with reason. So that means uh, I need to be cautious. But when what is limiting, doesn't matter. The environment is not limiting. It's just some trees are more sensitive than the other. What limiting is not limiting. Temperature is high, it's present a lot, it's, every tree is feel the same. It does some trees probably have more 
for fashion, didn't say girls, than the others. Sure, I, I have a question, but I want to apologize because I, I have had a lot of time to talk to you, but yep. I, when, once I see the, your information, I have a new question for you. Yep. Yeah, you said that probably the, many of the forest ecosystems here now are acting as a source of carbon instead of instead of in a, a sink, right? Mm. Yeah, but uh, there's a... Uh, what do you think about the the emission of carbon for very very young plant tissue like uh, uh, the root system? So you know, very young root systems are we we don't know about it, but maybe some of the forest. That, that, have my, that is my hypothesis. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not telling this is true, but the most many I think uh, very important part of carbon is going to to the root system. To answer your question, the two ways to answer your question. The first, to say carbon cycle is controlled by photosynthesis. It means the system is input control. You cannot exceed in your input. The maximum, you have no reduction in tree growth. That's the maximum you can expect. Okay, because they need energy. Okay, but theoretically, you probably have proportionally less reduction in tree growth in the but still reduction. Because the top is controlled housing. They don't put 100% from roots and take all the sucker in the background. But proportionally, probably more in the background reduction than the roots. So, to answer your question, not just tops to be out of it, roots also to be out. It's just probably less extent, but still changing direction. That's number one. Number two, for maturity data, and also from I recently published the ecology, nature ecology evolution. It's not my data. I have my own data too, but I said the published one first. They say globally, not just globally, all terrestrial existing. It's climate change. I don't, they don't worry about climate change. They just said the ecosystem has become more nitrogen. It's what nitrogen is less available. What that means. The whole ecosystem, soil, is, is because carbon reduction leads to the nitrogen reduction. If nitrogen is limiting, that means soil substrate by like fall and the soil pool is also reduced. If that's the only way nitrogen becomes limited, because carbon nitrogen is tied side by side. If, if nitrogen is limiting, then it's carbon limiting. Because most of that, the, the the, the nitrogen comes from soil. Okay, so answer your questions for my trading data indicate nitrogen tipping out is almost the same when the carbon is tipping out. So what that means instead of for example in in, in Borrow in nineteen ninety seven, not carbon load is going less, nitrogen is also less. That is because the carbon is constrained. And carbon nitrogen go side by side. So that means the below ground don't more. You have to get less. Less available. That is directly through my training data, but also indirectly through my analysis. They're just doing, but they're more than just forest, they're just global, including agriculture. Just all the land based system, nitrogen is less available. What that means, my carbon is also less. Because of the reduction in carbon. And in agriculture, we're not wise reduction because intensive management, the mining in carbon. But in forest, this tipping point is water is drying cycle, carbon gets less growth, less growth in the background, less carbon trade in the ground. So, the overall less carbon in the soil system. And the mining is subsequently becomes dense. I hope I've answered the question. Uh -huh. yes, sir. More questions? Yeah, yeah. Was, was, uh, what about uh, desert forest or? Uh, I haven't found the desert, but they're very insignificant. But theoretically, <laughs> just, just for your interest, theoretically, 
That's the force you more sensitive. Okay, because they are more watery. They should pass even that earlier than chop. I haven't done anything, okay? But because what is limiting? That's it, it's water limiting. How can you play with the king be any better? What is it again water limiting? But that's a force is very small. I haven't done because the, the other thing, that's a force uh, uh, I believe it's it's the same. It for even CO2, not to, not to mention the temperature, even CO2 increase continually, it's a matter of time reduce. It's it's plant physiology. It's a C3 plant. They don't need to open all the time when you get the concentration high. Because energy conservation. Because we almost macro need energy. That is thermodynamic. I think I think I haven't done much. But if you look global, planetary, which is include all this, ocean, 350 ppm, past tipping point, just nobody knows what that means. I'm just put biologic sense, force, since 1990 or 350, it's become a source, I'll say. Help answer your questions. <laughs> Anything else for Dr. Shu? That's a good thing. I think this that is very interesting. Have you seen if the current models of climate change have used them to to improve the the models? Uh, because as we know, if forest now is acting like sources, that means that relatively things are getting don't better. count forest as a big thing because they're not anymore. They actually potentially what what I said potentially relatively they are source because they take less CO two than this. If your emission is zero, there's still CO2 more. Because CO2 is global secular. It doesn't say it's Australia or Mexico. It's global secular. So it's CO2 is global. So it's global feedback, unfortunately. But you know CO2 is not, emission is not zero. You know that's not <coughs> far from zero emission. We, we target at about the middle of century or 20 years later. You know, carbon neutral. It means, but not. But now, if you from period, a different model. If you don't believe it, you measure because that is measurable. It's different model. Model is so many models. Okay, but that model I like it because it's it's verified but empirical data. If any model could be tested by model. But the experiment done, and then you got fast. Some of the models, I'm not sure how they come up because they different scenario. Uh -huh. A model, you got three models with caution. That's why I want to use real data. Okay, uh, and so looks like it, that plan and the boundary is, is a good one. That means you, but they're not doing the biological. They're doing thermodynamic. They're doing mass balance. They, they're actually purely theoretical. Just from energy, mass boundary. Which will be the role of micro the soil? For example, I'm thinking in micro Mycorrhiza. And fungi that uh, reserves some carbon and is spread in the soil. But if plants is suffer, micro microbes suffer too. Because they need the carbon. If the ecosystem tipping out, because they can less carbon micro, they need energy. They don't have enough energy, you know what micro do? Particular bacteria, they nitrify. If they don't have enough nitrogen from soil to carbon, they oxidize ammonia to nitrate, get energy. But you know, when you do nitrogen cycle, you know, nitrogen in a nitrate form is nightmare. It's either wash with water, bleach it, or denitrify, come gas, leave the system. And then I have to tell you a lot of work. A recent five years work looks like nitrogen cycle. It's disrupted by like carbon cycle. You have a lot of denitrification coming. Because extreme weather, don't forget, it's not just warm and dry. You have the other two extremes, also energy expression. Drop, flood. It's a long time. Temperature driving the water vapor in the air and no water. Once cold flood coming, 
the water just like a bucket that just dropped. That's called intensity of rainfall. Frequency of rainfall, particularly flood, is increasing. And denitrification lead this sort of extreme weather. Long time drought, the plant don't grow. Microbial is struggling without energy nitrified, so they build up a big nitrate pool. When the water is coming, you know what? Microbes like human beings, antioxidants, they don't like oxide stuff. If in an oxide environment, you'll die quick. Okay, so microbial, at least denitrified, once the water is there, you've got nitrite, they send off nitrite as a gas form, either as N2O or as nitrogen gas into atmosphere. What that means, the nitrogen leaves the system totally. That is one of the reasons leading to natural force nitrogen decline. It's not just carbon, because of the organic matter, the carbon nitrogen is tied up. You've got lit, less gross, less litiful. There's, there's no kind of available. But also, it's on one side, less available. On the other side, more source. If nitrogen is leaving the system, because as, as climate is intensified, you get more flooding, denitrification. Each denitrification can lose about 50 to 100 kilos of nitrogen, depending on how much nitrogen you get. 95% of nitrate will be lost on the underwater. Denitrification is very is global. So what that means, on one side, nitrogen is getting less through substrate. On the other one, the soil is getting less because of the draining the, uh, uh, the gas is lost through denitrification. So nitrogen is becoming increasingly limiting because of extreme weather, because of carbon, the ecosystem carbon nitrogen relationship. So the short answer is, Michael's in is in a stress condition. They won't be very happy. Okay. That means they're doing something unexpected, not good for system. Either send nitrate off, or they take some nutrient or energy for themselves. Okay, because they are they are struggling too. So micro, but micro is much evolve much faster. They coping climate change much better than trees. They're human beings, they're animals. So I, I think the micro will be the last frontier, last survival of climate change. They, they just evolve quick. But if you look at Microsoft carefully, they are crying because they are in a very poor physical, chemical state. So I didn't answer your question directly, but I think it's not very important. <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you, thank you very much for coming for, from so long distance to be with us. Thank you. Sorry, I, I, I just remembered that you know, the fight, the basic part of it.